Now, what direction are you supposed to get your thoughts going? Well, look at the next word here in our verse. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace him whose inclination or direction of his mind is steadfast. Now, what does that word steadfast mean? Well, the word steadfast, it's translated this way other places in the Old Testament, literally means to lay or to rest. When they brought a sacrifice to the priest, he rested or laid his hands on the head of that animal to pray over it and put those sins symbolically on the head of that animal. And so you lay or you rest. It means to lean. It means to lean your mind in that direction. So whose mind is leaning or laying or resting. And in Judges 16, 29, it's translated braced. It's the story of Samson. You you might know the Bible story of Samson and how he came to the end of his life and realized he had done wrong. And at the end of his life, he was blinded and he was going to destroy that Philistine temple. And he said, let me feel the pillars. And he felt the two big pillars of of that temple. And it says he leaned on those pillars. Or in the NIV, it says he braced himself on those pillars two pillars. That's the same word as steadfast here. So it's translated to lie or lay, to rest, to lean or to brace. So it's saying you've got to, if you want to have shalom, shalom, perfect peace, the direction of your mind has to be leaning, has to be braced, has to be resting. What does it need to be resting on? Well, that last phrase tells us. You'll keep him in perfect peace whose inclination of his thoughts is leaning, is braced, is resting because he rests or trusts or depends or relies on the Lord, on God. So what you're going to have to do If you want to have perfect peace, you're going to have to control your thoughts and your mind and consciously make an effort that the direction of my thoughts is going to be that I'm going to lean, I'm going to rely on God, I'm going to trust in Him. The word trust and the word steadfast are very much similar. Both of them mean to rely, to depend, to lean upon something. And in this case, it's God. And you see... It says in the next verse, verse 4, Isaiah 26, 4, trust, there's the word, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. The reason you can have this shalom by leaning on God is because he's he's rock solid. You're going to lean on God. You're going to be braced on God. You're going to move your thoughts in direction of trusting in God. And you trust in God because he's the rock and it'll give you stability and you'll have a sense of peace in your life when you're trusting in him. Peace comes from relying on something solid. Something solid. A few weeks ago, Cindy and I <coughs> were on vacation in Oregon and Washington. We met, went to Mount Rainier National Park in Washington, and we were hiking one day a trail in Mount Rainier, and we came to a swinging bridge over a river. Uh, Steel cables holding this swinging bridge over a river, and there was a sign by it that said, one person on the bridge at a time. Now, that seemed to me like a very small margin of error, you know? I could see that it said, don't, no, don't have five or ten people on the bridge. But one person, I mean, the difference between one and two is not very great, you know. Don't put two on the bridge. One is okay. You're probably going to make it. Two, that seems like a small margin of error to me. And so we cross this bridge one at a time, and it held up. But you know what? You don't have shalom, shalom when you're crossing something that says <laughs> no more than one person on the bridge at a time. You know, you just wonder, why is that sign there? Why did, uh, you know, two people walked on it one time. Oh, they went in the river. We better put the sign up. Let's just cut it to one. Now, that's a small margin of error. So we went across the bridge, and it was fine. But I was thinking about that as I read this verse. When you're not on something solid, you don't have shalom. Shalom comes from leaning on something that's solid. Contrast that by a rock. Have you ever been to Stone Mountain in uh, Georgia? How many of you have ever been to Stone Mountain? Oh, a lot of you have. The rest of you ought to go to Stone Mountain. 
It's a great place to go. You breathe that Georgia air, that's a good thing right there. And Stone Mountain near Atlanta <clears throat> is a big piece of granite, sticks out of the ground 800 and something feet into the air, five miles in circumference around it. And there's a trail up it that you can hike up, walk up to the top, about a mile to walk up to the top. And I've walked up there, and you know, I've never heard anybody on that trail say, boy, I hope this thing holds us up, you know? Now, you may worry about getting too close to the edge and falling off or something, but nobody ever has anxiety or stress. Oh, I hope this holds us up. Y'all just say Stone Mountain extends nine miles into the earth's crust. I think it's going to hold you up, right? So you have security. when you, you know, You're not worried about it falling when you hike Stone Mountain because shalom, peace, tranquility, contentment, well-being, safety, comes from relying on something solid. Well, God says, I'm your rock. God says, I'm your stone mountain. You can let your full weight down. You can depend on me. You can rely on me. You can have shalom, shalom. It's as silly for you to live a worried, anxious life as it is for a person walking up stone mountain to say, boy, I hope this thing holds me up. Hope it doesn't collapse with me. That seems silly to us. God's a bigger rock than that mountain. He says, you can trust me. You can depend on me. 